Well, welcome back. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has insisted that none of the 74 parties that registered last year will participate in the electoral process until the Supreme Court decides otherwise. It said it will continue to recognize and allow only the 18 registered parties to nominate and contest uh, elections in the country. To discuss this with me is Festus. Okoye Chairman, Information and Voter Education Committee, Independence National Electoral Commission, and of course, a political analyst at DME Saka. Good evening to you, Mr. Okoye. Let's talk about uh, this deregulation, uh, deregistration of the 74 political parties. Let me just quote what you said. Uh, you said it is in the interest of the electoral process for both matters to be consolidated. Would you say that the court judgment and uh, different court judgment we've had in the country has actually negated the free flow of the electoral system and um, the improvement of our elections? Well, well I think that uh, the point here uh, is that um, uh, just before the 2019 elections, uh, we had a total of 91 registered political parties uh, that um, we are supposed to have participated in that particular election. Uh, one of the political parties was registered, but did not um, have the opportunity of participating in the election. And that made the total number of registered political parties uh, in Nigeria as a then, um, as, uh, uh, you know, you know uh, it was 92 political parties. Now, you will also remember that uh, before the coming into force of uh, the amended constitution, uh, the issue of the registration of political parties was governed by the Electoral Act. And some of the political parties then uh, went to this, up to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court voided some of the provisions of the, of the Electoral Act relating to the issue of the registration of political parties. Now, the lawmakers, in their wisdom, um, decided uh, to impute the issue of registration into the Constitution itself. And that's why we have Section 225A of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria now relating uh, to the issue of uh, uh, the registration of uh, uh, political parties. Uh, so as far as the commission is concerned, uh, uh, whether we have 100 or 200 registered political parties uh, does not really fall within the purview of the electoral management body. So long as those political parties uh, satisfy and continue to satisfy uh, the, the requirements of the law, uh, the commission is not the uh, a lawmaking organ. It's not a lawmaking agency. Neither is it a law. Uh, uh, is it, neither is it um, uh, an adjudicatory uh, a body. Our position and our function is to register political parties that meet the threshold set in section two two zero to section two two nine of the constitution, and also to the register uh, political parties that fall off the radar of section two two five a of of the constitution. Uh, so uh, for for us. Um, we want to remain within the, uh, the, the, the confines and ambit of the constitution in our operations. Uh, so uh, political parties are part of the electoral process. Uh, the existence of a multi-party multi democracy is part of our heritage, and the commission uh, will maintain that heritage. All right, we'll come back to you now. Yemi, let's talk about the judiciary vis-a-vis -vis judgment and counter-judgment and the Nigerian electoral system. What would you really say? This particular issue, there are two different uh, court uh, you know, judgment on this. Would you say that uh, our judiciary is not really helping our electoral system in Nigeria? Well, I, I would not want to indict the judiciary because the judiciary is not a bazaar awarding institution, organization. It's what you bring to the table, the facts of your case that it's judge or merit. Yes, there are instances where um, the integrity of the judiciary or the bench has been brought to public disrepute, but that's not enough to cast you know, wholesome indictments on the judiciary. I, I think it's time for us to, to start people on honorable men on the bench, I, because I'm yet to say anybody that's dishonorable, honorable men of the bench on the bench to, to maintain a standard, at least if there's a unique standard in abdicating cases, yes, you know, there is dynamism in every case, but there is a background, um, uniform or probably united grounds across board. And I think that should be, if that is applicable, if that has been put in place or probably put to bear in cases like this, we'll be having conflicting 
injunctions or judgments or pronouncements over the same issue. But for me, it's um, if appeal court says this guy stands to be stands remain a political organization or party in Nigeria, Anek is insisting, I think, well, rightly that the Supreme Court has the final say. Okay. I want us to keep our fingers crossed Perhaps. and say the Supreme Court has the final say. All but right. Uh, the judiciary is meant to be the body that interprets the law. True. Uh, the National Assembly, in its wisdom or otherwise, could probably input some other things in the Constitution. Mm -hmm. But it's left for the judiciary to tell us if it's wise or otherwise. And so we should get it, we should get this thing clear. Even in the United States of America, we just talk about the Democrats and the Republicans. That doesn't mean there are no other parties mm. in existence. Some parties just, and you know, even INEC is years in 16 and, you know, talking tough mm. rightly on the registration of political parties. But they should, and INEC should understand that even the political process, electoral process that INEC claims or probably wants to monitor, which has to, which one is um, the, the amount of money spent on elections. Mm. Which, is, which has not been done effectively. It's what brings about the bets of other political parties. What's, what's a man just wants to aspire to be might just be a local government councillor. But because of the money politics in place and every monetization of political process, it cannot get a ticket. And it needs, it needs, it needs a platform because our, the National Assembly has not been wise enough to believe in independent candidacy. So it needs a platform. And I, all I just, my platform might just be strong enough in my locality. I might just be the only face of the platform. So why? About the relevance and of these platforms and how they have contributed to the electoral system. Uh, but uh, Mr. Okoye, there is this belief that uh, one of the reasons why INEC is going on about deregistering those part political parties is that they are, or you guys, that is, the, your commission is overwhelmed by the number of political parties. Is, that, is there any truth in that, or is it just a case of uh, the fact that uh, they are not even performing? What exactly are these conditions that these political parties did not really meet? Well, uh, um, it, it is not within the um, uh, competence uh, and jurisdiction of the uh, electoral management body uh, to just deregister political parties uh, just for the fun of it. Uh, if you look at uh, section 221 to section 229 of the constitution, uh, it lists very clearly the conditions which a political association must meet or fulfill uh, before such an association is registered as a political party. And that is what we have been doing. The moment a political association meets those thresholds, the, com the commission is under a constitutional and legal obligation uh, to register such a political association as a political party. However, the lawmakers in their wisdom also have also imputed into the constitution, which is the fundamental law of the land, conditions which a political party uh, 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 must meet in order to remain registered. Now, if you look at the amendment to the constitution, especially section 225A of the amended constitution, it states clearly that the Independent National Electoral Commission shall have the power to re register a political party for a breach of any of the requirements for registration. So if the constitution says that a political party must maintain a, a, a verifiable office in the federal capital territory Abuja, and a political party ceases to maintain an office in the federal capital territory Abuja, the commission is under a constitutional obligation to deregister such a political party. Secondly, he says that the commission can deregister a political party for failure to win 25% uh, 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 of the votes cast A in one state of the federation in a presidential election or one local government of the state in a governorship election or for failure to win at least one word in a chairmanship election or one seat in the national or state house of assembly election or one seat in a councillorship election. So the moment you fall outside this threshold, the moment you do not meet this constitutional requirement, the commission is under a constitutional obligation to deregister such a political party as a party. And then it can now operate as a political uh, a, 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 a association. So that is just the, the case. If we refuse to carry out 
the impediment of the constitution, we, as an electoral management body, will be violating the constitution and will be breaching the spirit and intent of the, of the constitution. So we are under a legal obligation to register political parties, political associations that meet the constitutional threshold, even if there are 1,000. And we also under an obligation to de register a polit political parties or polit uh, that don't, do not meet the constitutional threshold yes, for remaining. We'll come back to you uh, so yet it's again. It's not issue of being overwhelmed or not being overwhelmed. Okay. It's just issue of obeying what the constitution has said. All right, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Okoye. Yemi, you want to react uh, concerning what he just said? Plus, you do that. Let's find out the relevance and, uh, you know, do we really need as much political parties like that in Nigeria? So far, if you add the 74 to the 18, we have that INEC has actually recognized there'll be about 92 altogether. Oh, it's, not, it's not a question of do you really need the numbers, such large numbers. It's a, is it their right to have it? If they're entitled to have it, so be it. It's not about whether we like it or not. Um, I, I see the, the provisions um, inserted by, in their wisdom at the National Assembly. And I would say that is um, undemocratic, that is anti-people. And unless we want to lie to ourselves, um, INEC, INEC has not been conducting local government elections, I think since 2002, 2000, since 2003. And we know what local government election has been like under various sec across the country. There is no way any political party that is not the gov is not the, the the party ruling the state will have even a seat at the councillor level. Don't let us lie to ourselves. We are Nigerians. Don't let us delude ourselves. Our electoral system, yes, is evolving, but it's not as clear. It's not as friendly as those people that inserted those um, sections or provisions in the constitution. Do you know, how, I, I will say this authoritatively, yes, you might say it's specul speculative, but do you know how much you need to run to become the governor of Lagos State? <laughs> do, you, do you know how much you need to run to have your point to become a senator? All right. Okay. Uh, Mr. Okay, one last one. I just want to get uh, a bit of an update concerning um, the by-election in um, AK, the state, which was um, cancelled on Saturday. Well, well the, the update um, we have is that, one, uh, the commission has suspended uh, that election indefinitely. Uh, so at a much, much later date, uh, the commission may, may need to review the situation. But as of today, we have suspended it indefinitely. Uh, se secondly, uh, the, the, the state government and the commission of police have confirmed that those who perpetrated the act have been arrested and that, and that they will be uh, a charge to court. Uh, so we are following up on the situation. And we are very, really, really saddened by the turn of events uh, because this election took place in just, in, in just five wars, the half of a local government. So if we can register violence in a state assembly election, it is it's a warning sign. Uh, it's not a good sign uh, for things to come. Uh, so right. what we have said is that in the by-election we have in Abanot South Federal Constituency, and the one we have in um, in Delta State, we have said that the All right, security thank you, agencies Mr. must engage in clearance and neutralize right, thank you, every Mr. threat to those elections. All right. I want to say a big thank you to the National Commissioner there who joined us from Abuja Festus, okay? And of course to you, uh, Adeye Misaka, for joining us to discuss all of these issues right, today. Yeah. All right, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break, and when we return, I'll be giving you my take. Well, Nigeria is not a banana republic, even though certain retrogressive elements and centrifugal forces are trying to consign Nigeria into a failed state. We still have a democracy and a nation of laws and not men. Nobody or group, however highly placed, should take the laws into their hands. Self-help is an invitation to anarchy and must be nipped in the board. It remains the primary responsibility of government, especially the federal government, who have the monopoly of the coercive forces of state to secure the lives and livelihoods of our people, however low or high. And that's Plus Politics. I am Justin Academia. We return again 7 p.m. tomorrow. Bye for now.